the all-star app, the number one app in the business, UFC, Bellator, One Championship, PFL, and more. Get the app right now. Link in description. Let's talk about that fight, man. I, I, I thought it was like the round of the year because you guys both clipped each other. You guys both hurt each other. It was just like shot for shot. You know what I mean? At one point, yeah. Choi, Choi was just running at you with his arms just flailing. Let's go to that moment right there. He was running at you just throwing hooks. Like, what were you thinking at that moment? So, he he hit, to start that exchange, He hit. I'm pretty sure he hit me with a left hook. It stumbled me, but I was okay. And then he blit, He jumped through a knee. He blitzed me, but I, I was good. I was just trying to get, like, I was, I was getting ready to to throw back and uh he was just blitzing me so i was just trying to keep my hands up my guard up and just kind of weather the storm a little bit let him burn himself out he was opening himself up so i was getting ready to to throw a counter but uh i was good like i think he thought he hurt me bad and was trying to go for the finish and uh but i, I was all right <laughs> yeah man that's what's great about it is that both you guys were going for the finish at all times you know what i mean yeah. like it was it was just like it seemed like you guys fought three rounds in in a four minute fifty one min, four minute fifty one second span, right? It was crazy. I had a lot of people telling me like, "Oh, yo, there's a great finish in the second round." I was like, "Dude, it was one round." <laughs> there, people were like, "That was one round." Felt like a whole fight. <laughs> yeah, it 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 almost it's like he was the perfect opponent for that moment. Do you feel that yeah. way? I I do. I I say this every time. You know, I I want to fight guys that are tough. You know, I want to fight game opponents. You know, I, I feel like I've fought tough guys every time I've stepped in there. You know, sometimes you fall short and sometimes you pull through. And, you know, that I, I was trying to make a statement and, and I did. You definitely did. Um, you know, on the way to the cage, you were saying I'm faster, I'm stronger. Even I think inside the cage, you were saying that until the fight even started. Where did that come from? That came from my head coach, Tiger Shulman. Um, he, he was pretty much, uh, talking to me before I started warming up cause he had to go, uh, corner Julio the fight before, cause we both had the same coaches. So before he was going to go out, he was telling me, he's like of, uh, a story that he had when he was fighting back in the day. And he pretty much put himself mentally in the fight and compared himself to his opponent and he you know we always have nerves and that kind of stuff going into a fight but the way he would handle it is he would do like a checklist and he would say all right is this guy faster than me no i'm faster is this guy stronger than me no i'm stronger and he kind of just you believe in yourself and that was the whole purpose is just you know i have the tools i just got to believe in myself you know i i feel like a lot of times i, I beat myself and I have the tools to beat everybody. I just got to believe in it. And I just kept telling myself I was faster and I'm stronger and faster. And I'm stronger. And I made myself believe it. And I think it worked. It just shows you how like the mind is so much part of the, the fight game. You know what I mean? We only see the physical, right? We only see the knockouts, yeah. the submissions, the, the exchanges, you know, and, and for yourself, you know, you, you lost back to back, never in your career, you've lost back to back. So it must have had, you must have had some, some mental battles during this training camp, right? Like kind of getting your confidence back again. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it was, it was a tough training camp. Um, you know, I, when I, when I got to the fight, like I just, there was, there was no way I was going to lose. You know, I had just too much going on in my life that I, I just, I needed I needed that moment and I I just feel like I I perform well under a lot of pressure and I mean that fighting at Madison Square Garden is a lot of pressure yeah. and last fight on my contract two losses in a row yeah. you know I yeah. just there was a lot building up and I think it just brought the best out of me yeah it brought the dog out you know those memes where you they show the x-ray and there's like three pit bulls inside you know, yeah. like that. <laughs> that's for sure that's for sure i had i had to be a dog in there man yeah. I, I mean i knew troy was gonna come forward and it was gonna be a scrap so you know i was ready for it the double knockdown 
what did you, when you rewatched it, right? Did you rewatch it right away after the fight or uh, I wa- I watched it the next day. Okay. I rewatched it a few times. Yeah. And the uh, the Step Brothers meme, you posted it, you know, it was perfect. Oh, uh, right? hilarious. It was ESPN, <laughs> I think that 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 put that together. Yeah. I mean, that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen any other memes of of that? Yeah, there was one of like me after the after the knockout, I'm running around the cage and like I slam the ground screaming and there was one that said uh the caption was like, "You are not the father," and it's just like me <laughs> celebrating, like "Yeah, <laughs> the Mori Povich, the Mori Povich." Yeah, <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, the um, those are like the two I saw that were really hilarious. So, yeah, it's always good, man. It's always good to be on the 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 right side of of that sequence, right? That of situation, course, of course. right? Because <laughs> the memes can get real, real nasty. In, in oh, yeah. you know, to the loser. I mean, the right? internet is undefeated. <laughs> yeah, man, it's it's crazy. The fans come up with it so fast. Um, the final sequence, man, the counter left hook. Is that something that you guys really worked on? You know, you and your coaches during training camp. Yeah, yeah, I practiced that a lot. Um, I uh, I knew he he always throws two threes, three twos. You know, the cross hook, hook cross, like those are his combos. So. You know, I, I was trying – the main thing was to use my jab a lot, which I was landing very, very, very quickly and uh, just to hit in between his strikes. So he was really – towards the end, he was opening up a lot and leaving himself open and throwing big. So I just – I set it up by just slipping his, his right hand and, and hitting him with a left hook before he can land his left hook. And it landed right on the button, so – yeah, man, you guys are both catching each other, right? He took some hard shots. You took some hard shots. You know, how hard does he hit compared to, let's say, your previous few opponents? No, he hit hard. Um, I think it was just more just the, the timing of it. Like he, he was, he was, he was quick. I think I was faster, but he he was, he just threw a lot, you know. And I again, I knew he was going to do that. And when someone throws a lot, I mean, you can't, it's, it's hard to block every single shot and. While you're throwing, you're opening yourself up too. So every time he hit me, it was usually because I was throwing as well. So we were just cashing each other in in every exchange. <laughs> yeah, even the commentators, man. Did you listen to the commentators? They were, they were like, they could even handle it, man. They were just... It was just, they were like screaming. It wasn't even the commentary <laughs> half the time. <laughs> Can you hear the commentators even in, in MSG? No, I actually... I actually just really only hear my coaches, to be honest with you. Um... It's, I mean, I heard the crowd a bunch of times, but like I've been trained, I, I've trained myself to like really zone out most of the, most of the crowd and just focus on what my coaches are telling me to do. So it's kind of almost like white noise in a sense. Like it's just like background noise, and, but I do hear it. When does that kind of click in after you win? Is it like right after the ref stops the fight that you get, you hear everything? Like you start to absorb everything that's going on? Yeah. Yeah, most likely. Um, I mean, when once he stopped it, and, and I'd say a good five minutes or so went by, then like it really started to sink in that like everything, every the whole experience, you know. Because I was in, I was in like such a zone when I was walking out, and when I was in there, like everything else just faded out. The adrenaline rush, man, of that. Have you ever had that type of? shot of adrenaline in in past fights yeah i mean a fight's a fight Mm -hmm. you know regardless of where it's at i always you always have a crazy adrenaline dump when after the fight so i mean i always try i always plan like oh maybe i'll go out and and celebrate a little bit but after the fight like i get to the locker room i'm like damn i'm I'm exhausted (laughs) i just want to go to bed (laughs) i want to eat something and go to bed (laughs) the you're pretty pissed, man, about the your cowboy hat, man. That was the first time we didn't get to see your cowboy hat. And, and I don't understand the whole thing about the flags. Did they ever explain to the fighters exactly why the flags are not allowed? I don't think so. But, I mean, I feel like it has something to do with the whole war in Ukraine. And they don't want people walking out with flags. I have no idea. The whole thing is so stupid. Like, regardless of what country you're from, you should be able to rep and 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 show pride of where you're from you know i i don't see any issue with that and i don't see any issue with anybody from any country repping their flag there's nothing wrong with it you know when countries go to war it's not the people that are going to war it's the corrupt governments going to war so 
you know, 90% of the people in the country that's going to war, they're, they don't want to fight. They just want to live their lives. They're just trying to make money and feed their families, you know? So, I mean, I think the whole thing's stupid. But what are you going to do? You know what's funny about that situation is that a fighter can represent any country on their fight shorts they want. Did you know that? Yeah, I did. I represented Italy so I could wear green shorts this time. <laughs> exactly, right? So why can't you uh, carry a flag? That makes no sense. <laughs> Nothing makes sense. <laughs> Nothing makes the past sense. couple of years haven't made sense. Exactly. So, okay, why stop you're right. now? You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, you know, when you talked about the pressure, right, of, of fighting in the situation you're in, in this moment, but be, ahead of the, the fight, you're doing interviews saying, like, yeah, I don't feel no pressure. Like, how does it feel to be lying to everybody, like, to their face? Like, that's what you're basically doing. Like, there's no pressure in this, you know what I mean? Like, and then afterwards, you kind of revealed, like, what you were going through. But fighters have to do that, right? They have to mask some things. Yeah, I mean, there's always pressure. But if you, if you, it, for me, if I, if I talk about it constantly, like, all the pressure, all the pressure, it, like, almost, like, enhances it. So... Yeah, maybe it seems like I'm masking it or just putting it to the side, but I'm just – I'm trying to keep my mind focused on the job at hand, the task at hand, the game plan, what I got to do when I'm in there. There's always going to be pressure, but for me personally, I feel like if I'm constantly just talking about the pressure, it's just going to make it worse than it actually is. So I try not to talk about it. But you're going to like this interview and going to this room and then going to this other room and they're all asking the same damn question about do you feel the pressure? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like yeah. coming at you everywhere, right? Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a it's a wild game you guys play, you know what I mean? Cuz it's not like you're shooting a basketball or throwing a football. You're you're going in there hand in hand combat, which is insane to me. Yeah. It's uh it's it's something that most people will never understand and you know myself i could ask you a million questions about it and you can explain it to me but the feeling of it will never come because we don't know um you talked about changes during this training camp could you detail some of those changes like exactly what you changed and and allowed you to put yourself in this position to get the win i just i i uh I just trained harder than I've ever trained before. You know, I, I, I made a point like every training session I went into, I just was trying to win and I was trying to push myself and to my breaking point and keep going. And I just was trying to make it as grueling as possible. So the fight was easy, you know, and, and I knew ahead of time that the fight was going to be a grueling fight, regardless of how fast, it only went barely went to the second round, you know, or if it goes three rounds, like regardless, I was ready for a war. And uh, so that's what I had to do. I had to mentally prepare like I was going to war. Do you feel like you unlocked uh, like a new level of yourself, a new character, I guess? Uh, I absolutely do. Yeah. I think uh, I needed a moment like this to really bring out what I'm capable of. A, a turning point moment in your career, basically. 100%. Awesome. And another thing is uh, you will be a father in February, man. How, how, I don't know, it's a daunting thing, man, because I'm a father as well. And uh, it's something that's like a new adventure that will last yeah. for years and years. Not, it's not like a camp, you know what I mean? It's going to last for yeah. years and years. Yeah, man. I, I think it lit a fire underneath me, to be honest. Um, but it's kind of it's like a weird feeling right now because like he's the kid's not here yet <laughs> so i don't think it'll fully hit me until it, he actually is born <laughs> so yeah but either way like with that happening in my life like i feel like i just i i needed to win i needed to win for that sole purpose and i want my son to be able to see me victorious at madison square garden like that's a bucket list fight for me and in my career um to fight at an arena like that and uh i'm just excited to eventually share it with him so you yeah, know what it's the fire it, you know what's dope is that it's all on the internet like the yeah. interviews that you've done talking about your soon-to-be child your child can go back and search that shit and and watch it 
which is crazy yeah. to me. Like, you know, even like your past fights, even you on the Ultimate Fighter, you're like, oh, my dad was on this team. You know, like that stuff is, it's 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 very rare. You know what I mean for a person to have that. Yeah. No, for sure. It's definitely interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's fun, man. And you could go and, and talk, have conversations with, with your child about it and, and maybe even mistakes you made. And you could kind of give them the lessons, you know, from yeah. that for their future. Yeah, absolutely. Man. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. Um, so are you going to wait for the birth of your child to, to return to fighting? Yeah, I think so. Um, let my body rest a little bit. I, mean, I fought three times this year and, uh, you know, it's not the fights that take take a toll. It's the camps that take a toll, you know. So just get ready for the birth of the kid, and um, I still gotta renegotiate a new contract and everything. So get that done. And again, I, I mean, I always want to stay active. So I mean, I'd like to fight another two, three times next year as well. So see what happens. Free agency, man. It's it's something that's pretty new to this sport. You know, we haven't yeah. really had it. And it seems like in the last couple of years, other promotions have grown bigger and have, you know, much more money to offer fighters and in, in in different platforms, right? So um, who knows what's going to happen? You've shown interest that you want to renegotiate, you want to re-sign with the UFC, but yeah, you never know. You know what I mean? You never know what's going to happen. But all the best in that situation you, to you, man. I hope they give you the most money you know what i mean because at the end of the day you have a child you have a family to take care of you want money yeah. right <laughs> yeah of course it's always nice <laughs> mike appreciate the time man everybody go to the descriptions and download the all-star app hope to see you early 2023 in that cage against a, a fire opponent enjoy the the holidays man uh, likewise it's good to talk to you again man